Welcome to the Institute's Leading Edge, a show dedicated to helping the automotive aftermarket service industry. Covering topics suggested by you, the listener, we dive into what's important, getting you what you need to succeed. In today's episode, the Institute is sharing some big news. The industry's changing, and so are we. Cecil's joined by our esteemed colleague, Dan Gilly from Arlo Training. They discuss the ins and outs of running successful training companies, the big issues that shops are dealing with today, and how we aim to make a positive impact together. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of The Leading Edge. What are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess we have an announcement to make, Dan, don't we? We do. We ha- we are, well, actually, we'll probably make several announcements, but uh, go ahead. Um, the Institute and uh, RLO Training are now working together. Uh, we will keep the company separate, but we're working together uh, because we have resources that we can use. It will uh, help cut our costs and, and uh, help our clients uh, give them a lot more opportunities, I believe. So, Dan, we, we got to look at the camera, not at each other. Where Dan and I are actually in the same room. So, so uh, if he looks over at me or I look over at him, uh, that's what's going on. Um, uh, Dan, let's talk about how this, um, how this came about. Well, I think we've known each other for quite a few years, and and the uh, one of the nice things about our industry in general is that uh, there's a lot of mutual respect between uh, trainers and training companies, and um, while we are competitors, we're very friendly competitors, and I think that that we've noticed over the last few years that we uh, philosophically uh, align in, in many ways as far as as what we believe for shops. You know, we're more about uh, being the Nordstrom of the shops instead of being Walmart, which is taking better care of the customers and getting paid what the shops are, are really worth. And so uh, with, with the alignments in philosophy and, and also uh, offering some similar uh, products, um, service advisor training, and, and with the two companies together, we will now cover it from, from the day to Z. Yeah, A to yeah. Z. Uh, with the group process, our bottom line impact groups and uh, your your groups uh, obviously is a, is a great way for sh- for shop owners to really grow uh, their business working with with other industry experts and then of course uh, the management training and um, we bring some different things to that again with the goal of of helping shops prosper and and of course our thing is you know the, the business is there to give give you a life, not consume your life. And your um, motto on, on uh, making sure that there's balance and in, uh, in your business, in your life. So our, uh, our, th- our thought process uh, at the Institute is if you uh, can run a good business, then it will help you have a real life. Uh, and, and because you're running a good business and you have a life outside of your business, the ability to do that, both the money and the time, that it's really good for the industry. So our motto is, or our mission statement is, better business, better life, better industry. And that's our, our thought process. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you and I, uh, or your company and my company, we really align well in that thought process. I, I don't wanna be the Walmart of training companies, uh, just like I wouldn't wanna to, want to be the Walmart of automotive shops. Um, I'm kind of anti-discounting. So in most cases, I won't discount. I won't recommend discounting. I'm looking to find a good customer for my business and ha- run a, a legitimate, profitable business. And, and uh, I think you and I are, are literally always been on the same page with that. And I, and I think especially as the industry goes forward, and the investment in equipment that shops are going to need to make, as well as the investment in additional training for their technicians, they are going to have to continue to generate more gross profit to be able to afford those things. And it's either going to be continue to grow or disappear. And uh, we want our clients to be around for a long, long time so they can take care of their families and their the families of their of their team. And um, I, I think that that's again a, a real um, point of agreement um you you were a shop guy i mean you had a you had a shop you worked at a shop you were a service advisor manager you owned a shop uh, just like myself mm-hmm. so so i think you know even though that was a few years back i think you and i we really understand 
the stresses of business, the automotive business, the, the peculiarity of the automotive business and uh, the oddities that the, the challenges that that are in the business itself. How long have you been? Um, how long has well, our little training has been around a long time because Bob Con O'Connor started this 35 years ago. Yeah. And then you, how long have you owned the company? Uh, I've owned the company for uh, 11 years. Uh, and and what what happened was I sold my shop uh, in 2000 and uh, in 2003 I actually went to work for Bob uh, because I believed I mean you know, I was I was the I drank the Kool Aid when I was a shop owner took the training joined the bottom line impact group it had a big impact on on my business and my life <clears throat> and so after I sold my shop I went to to work with Bob and and did training for Bob uh, and then and then bought the company from Bob. Um, in 2010 so did you did you buy it before he got sick or did you buy it just kind of as a part of that well yeah he he found out that he had um cancer and he bob was a workaholic yeah uh and uh that was like a wake-up call and he said well I'm, I'm going to um i'm going to work less and so why don't you buy the business and i'll go sail off in my boat and I said, great. And um, unfortunately, even though he had, the cancer would, had gone into remission, uh, it, it came back. But uh, did he ever get to sale? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good. Because I think, you know, uh, my, my father worked until he was 72 at the shop and the shop became his whole life. Uh, and to me, that's one of the reasons why I do what I do is because I'm hoping that I can teach a few other shop owners not to do that to themselves. Yeah. Um, so I remember um, walking around at a trade show, either uh, probably the one um, ATE, uh, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago. And I knew you because I knew you had been working for Bob and you and I kind of, you know, um, we kind of met in the hall and, you know, hey, how you doing kind of thing. And I came over to your booth. I remember very specifically that I probably talked to you for about 30 minutes and I thought, these guys... They're, they're very well aligned with how I feel about all this and how I think this needs to go forward. Um, you have a, one of the things that excites me really about this, um, you have, um, you have a, a short kind of um, service advisor program that is, um, it's, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. You can get a, a new person in there, get them going we have the continuation program that is the literally 130 concepts on sales. And, and so we don't have the, the little short, you know, we don't have the intro program. You have the intro program. We have the, you know, the, the, re the rest. And I just see so many places where, you know, we can fill a, a spot in your company and you can fill a spot in our company, which then, means that we can offer our, our clients and the industry a lot better, um, a lot more opportunity, a lot more options, and, and I think a better education. And I agree. We, <clears throat> I mean, the service advisor position is so key in our industry that, that um, we need to continue to, to work with shops to make the investment like they do in technicians where it's an ongoing, uh, ongoing training. And, and then the same thing with, with the management uh, training where you guys have done coaching and consulting uh, and our focus has been here's the training and here's the groups and so well if i want to coach where do i go well now again you're going to fill that gap in our um uh, our lineup and so if a, if a shop owner says well i'd like some training and then maybe i'd like some coaching and then maybe i like to go into a group we've got uh, the whole spectrum of of walking them from where they're at to where they want to be uh, in a short period of time. To me, that was kind of another another thing here. We we have been. I, I love to train, so don't get me wrong. I'm I'm a trainer. I'm a mm -hmm. teacher by birth. You know, whatever happened. You know, mm -hmm. either either God stuck it in me before I came down, or my mom dropped me on my head. Whatever happened, I'm I'm a trainer teacher. Um, but we have been kind of. 40% train, uh, um, 40% consulting, uh, you know, 20% group, uh, uh, 20% this and, and maybe 20% uh, trainer. 
And now we have a, a much broader um, aspect, I think, of the training. And we have the ability through for your clients to give them the additional coaching, the the one on one that they might desire. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, what do you think? What do you think is the is the lead, the most uh, interesting, you know, piece of the two companies coming together? Well, I think that the uh, the synergy that that comes out of the two companies working together, and of course, there's the benefits the the industry are are uh, to me are pretty apparent. The fact that they can get anything they want uh, working with and and us. really really quality, really quality stuff, stuff. We're, we're not there's nothing in my company that is done halfway in fact if anything we're, we we kind of overdo it a little and and i see that in your company also i don't think there's any there's anything that's halfway done so i th i think there's really great quality stuff there yeah and then uh, the advantages to the two companies uh in in cost savings um uh, for example, uh, marketing or IT, um, where where we'd love to have a full time IT guy, um, the company can't justify a full time IT guy. But between the two of us, an IT a full time IT guy is makes is, sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and and so those kind of things where where there's there's savings together and um, uh, again just being able to to reach more people and then when we we uh we offer if we offer a training a service advisor class uh there's a an audience that can that say, oh yeah we want that and um again working together uh, gives us well i have to tell you that it, it's re-energized me um because uh you know and all these shop owners out there know that sometimes it's lonely at the top and to, to, to work with somebody else who's excited about the industry, who cares about the industry uh, has re-energized me. And I, I feel um, very excited about the, the, uh, the next few years together and uh, what we're gonna accomplish. I think we're at an interesting um, cusp in the, in the industry. Uh, I think COVID has, has made a difference, maybe not as much as a difference as we equate to it, but you know, the sophistication of the vehicle has gotten more and more intense. Mm -hmm. The education necessary for a technician. We have a shortage of technicians right now. Some people would say we don't. Um, but if you're a shop owner right now and you need a tech, you're not fine. You're, you're running an ad and you may not find anybody for months. Uh, to me, that's a shortage. Um, and I think that, that, that this, this whole change in technology uh, is going to change our industry in a fundamental way. And, it, and to me, the shops that really truly understand how to do business correctly and, and, and make their margins and make sure there's money in the bottom line, pay their people well, have a, a, you know, a nice place for them to work, educate them. They're the guys that are going, the guys and gals that are going to go you know, forward in the industry and be very, very successful. I think, you know, in the, I would say in the seventies, when I was working on cars and eighties, it was, it was easier to fix cars in my opinion. Um, and, and now it's become more and more and more difficult to, to fix cars. Not just anybody can open the, you know, their shop with $300 worth of tools and, and all of a sudden be fixing cars. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think, I don't know, my, I'm an educator and, and I'm a consultant, a coach, trainer. Um, so I'm prejudiced, but I, I really see what happens when shops really start to understand the business as a business, as opposed to I'm a technician who is going to own a business. Um, and so I'm excited in all the things that we can do there to help these shop owners move the, the, themselves forward and become really great business people. Well, you know, that was a, one of the things that was uh, probably why we hit it off uh, is because we both care very deeply about the industry. And it's probably because of our background in that, you know, I started as a technician and um, and then I said, well, hey, uh, they're charging this much and they're paying me this much. If I open my own shop, I get to keep it all. Of course, and you, it takes about a week to figure out that that didn't work out quite the way you planned it. Um, but again, 
we care very deeply about, you care very deeply about uh, shop owners and technicians and advisors, everybody in our industry, and what can we do to help them? And I think that that's really uh, the key here is, is um, we, we want to do whatever we can to help the industry. And, and RLO's mission statement is to have a positive and profound effect on the automotive industry. And so the positive part, we're in agreement and the profound, we're working together to make it uh, profound. Yeah. yeah, to make it different. Um, what do you think stands out from the two companies um, maybe different than some of the other training companies or, uh, or trainers that are out there? What do you think stands out? Well, I, I think, again, <clears throat> that, that um, we both um, teach it's not car count. It's making each car count. So um, systems and processes, how you, the reception with the customer, how the vehicle is processed, the inspection process, uh, being a professional and presenting all of the findings uh, our job as a service advisor is to educate and inform the consumer. It's their car, it's their money, it's their decision. Our, if we educate and inform them, they can make a good decision. It doesn't mean they're going to buy anything from us, but at least we've done our jobs as professionals and let them know about the status of their vehicle. Um, I think that um, working, again, with shop owners to charge a fair price so they can pay their technicians top dollar and give them the benefits and still have money left over for the shop owner for their for their risk, for their uh, investment of blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, so that they can build something that, um, for their family going forward as well. So I, I think that, again, um, I just think that, that our, uh, like I said, our philosophies align in that, that we, we want to give the outstanding service and we can, we can make uh, more money working on fewer cars um, because we're doing those extras that people are willing to pay for. Um, I, I had a comment the other day from a client. I, I cannot tell you how, you know, this is why you and I are, 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 are now working together because we believe in the same things. And uh, um, I had a comment though from somebody the other day that I saw out in the, in the world. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm involved with five or six different groups online. And, and uh, from the one group, there was a comment, uh, profit, uh, it, it, it said something like profit or unhappy customers. Like you couldn't have both at the same time. And, and I, I, I don't know, the way that I've always lived my life, um, you know, uh, when we bought our first house, uh, I wanted tile, they didn't want to put tile in. So I wanted to upgrade. Well, I didn't have a lot of money. So I learned to do tile myself and did all the tile in our, our first home. And um, my mentality was, if somebody else can do that, then I can probably do it. I mean, there are things I'm, I'll never do. I mean, heck, I'm 295 pounds, six foot four. I mean, I'm not going to be a limbo champion. Um, but, but there are, you know. We could probably sell tickets to that. Yeah, you, <laughs> I know some guys that would probably buy them, especially if you you let them take, bring some rotten fruit and, and throw it. But, but um, you, you know, there are shops, most of the shops that I work with, and I'm pretty sure most of the shops that you work with in your company, they're very successful. They, they, they bring home 18, 20, 22% net profit. They have very, very happy customers. Uh, by and large, the employees are probably paid more than other shops in the industry, they have higher average repair orders. Um, and if they can do it, I can do it. So to, that, that kind of runs me into the group thing. Now we, we run Rollpack Smart Groups and, and that's going to, the, the groups are going to remain separate. We're going to keep doing the same thing, but I'm going to learn what your groups do differently or better than what my groups do and bring that to my groups. And then you're going to learn or your, or your, your uh, facilitators are going to learn what our groups do better, and we're going to be able to improve both. But that, that brings me to kind of the group dynamic and, and why groups are fundamentally, um, you know, you and I were talking earlier a couple hours ago that, that we both felt that the group thing was probably the, the biggest bang for the buck. 
uh, for uh, an automotive shop owner. Why do you think that's that's true? Well, um, I think that that when you put 15 to 20 shop owners in a room, and so for example, if, if I if I give you a dollar and you give me a dollar, we each still have a dollar. Yep, it's a dollar. But if I give you an idea, which spawns another idea from you, now we probably will both leave with three or four ideas. And again, when you have, I call them other industry experts, but 15 other shop owners that are serious about growing their business and serious about helping each other. It's like being in the room with industry experts that, um, again, no competitors in the room, but, but will share what works for them, what doesn't work for them. And um, it is, it is um, I remember my first group meeting, I, I just walked out of the room at the end of two and a half days and my mind was, was about to explode. And I thought, well, how, how have I gotten this? How have I lived this long and not known? All that I could this? do, I could do these things and other people are doing these things. Uh, there's a, there's a, I always say I'm going to write a book and the book's going to be titled Cecil, you don't understand because you, you, you know, you, you live in an, on an Island in your shop, or at least many shop owners do. And they think, well, I'm slow because it's the economy or because it's the, it's the community or where my shop is at. And, and you hear these, I'm going to call them what I think they're excuses kind of over and over and over again. But it's in Utah, you know, uh, there's too many Mormons in the place that they're cheap. And so it's hard to make a living in Utah, except we have a, a member of our, you know, uh, who's actually actually coached for us and and has run through our shop programs who has two amazing shops and when we met him he was literally ready to quit and walk away from the industry and and deeply in debt uh, uh arguing with his dad constantly and uh you know four years later he has two shops he's making tons of money all the bills have been paid and uh he's extremely happy with his place in the industry and i think that the group dynamic in a way allows me to get off of my island and and see well wait a minute that guy can do this i can do this uh in the uh in college i had a coach and uh he used to say if you want to learn how to drink and cuss go to the bar if you want to learn how to be a winner you got to hang out with winners right and i think that's really what the group process does is you hang out with other winners and uh, you know, the four minute mile, nobody thought they could run the four minute mile because it, your lungs were going to explode. And then Roger Bannister does it. And within 90 days, a half a dozen other people have done it. Yeah, it's believable. And, and I, you get into a group room and uh, a room with other shop owners and, and all this. Oh, I can't do that. Well, he does it and he does it. Well, hold it. If those two guys can do it, I can do it because, uh, you know, they're smart, but they're not that smart. We have a we have a northeast group. So in the northeast in Canada, uh, on the on the the excuse me northwest group uh, in the northwest and and the west side of Canada, we have we also have a northeast group. But um, uh, so you know Seattle, Portland, uh, uh, Alberta, and uh, we have a guy in in um, in uh, uh, Seattle who has a shop in Seattle. Wonderful guy, really really uh compassionate uh feeling caring guy who owns a shop and you know the the group he was part of the group for probably six or eight years and you know we were saying you need to put a parts matrix in place you need to put a parts matrix he's like well no you, you just wouldn't do it and uh and so one meeting you know the group kind of cornered him and the group said okay you know well he has a parts matrix and he has a parts matrix and he has a parts matrix and so we, we literally said, when are you going to put this mix? We want a day, a date, et cetera. So he broke down. He said, okay. And, uh, and he put a parts matrix in place and his profits went up uh, fairly dramatically. And, uh, and, and, you know, at the time he was in debt and now he's not in debt. And just, it was, it was really fun to watch the group. We, we do kind of a, a funny thing in our groups. I, I don't know about yours yet because I haven't attended a meeting, but um at some point labor rate will be it's almost a competition uh as to almost who has the highest labor rate and we'll have a guy raise his labor rate and then some of the other group members will go wait a minute he's higher than me so they'll go a few bucks higher than him um 
And I don't, I mean, customers are getting a really quality product. The shop is making a, a fair profit. Um, I think it's, I think the group thing is just, I think it's got the biggest bang for the buck. Not, not just because you have say 15 or, or even 18 other businesses. Uh, some of those are not as successful. Some of those have not yet learned some of the things that you've learned, but then there are other people there that have, have some real knowledge for you that can really help you. And it's really nice to have, you know, a brother or a sister that you can reach out to when you're struggling. And I think one of the things that we need to learn just as human beings, I don't even know if it has to do with business, but that we're going to, we're going to struggle uh, at times in our lives. We're in our, at times in our business. Uh, two weeks ago, I had one of my own clients call me and go, oh my gosh, you know, it's terrible. Everything that's the phones have died and everything. So we, you know, we, I said, okay, get on the phones, do this, this, and this. We, we, I said, reach out to the group. We, uh, for us, we have a, uh, on, on our gear for shops, we have an area that is for our smart groups. And so our smart groups can get together and, and discuss, and it's not, there's no other, there's no other baggage there. There's no other crud going on. It's just the smart group members. Uh, and, uh, and then we went to his, his marketing people and had a conversation and the marketing people said that there's nothing to indicate that anything has changed. But for him, he literally felt like the phones had just died for a week. And then the other thing I told him was bear it out next week. You're going to have a great week. And, and sure enough, you know, on Tuesday of the next week, I get this, this message, you know, it's a, it's a, a three man shop. They've already sold $23,000 worth of work. They've already finished. They're going to have a record week. If they, you know, even if it, even if it peters out a bit, they're still going to have a record week at the shop. Um, and I think that's nice when you're, when you're feeling like the world is coming to an end, you can talk to somebody or some bodies and, and, and say, well, yeah, I felt that way too about a month ago, but you know, everything is, is okay. And that's, you know, it's, it, you, you come across um, different things as a shop owner and to be able to share them with the group and get their input. Um, I had a, a situation years ago when, when I was in a group and I, I had a technician who uh, was an alcoholic and uh, I, I didn't know how to deal with it at all. And I, I shared the group and, and two, of, two of the members at that time had been through a similar situation. And they both said that, well, this is how I handled it. And it was really helpful because, I mean, where, where else would I turn for something like, I mean, that's, you're not going to find that in a book. Um, but, but these guys had been through it and this is how they handle it. And, and, and the guy was, you know, the guy was a very strong technician. He just had this issue that he had not been able to, to, uh, to overcome or to, to reckon with. And, and so their input helped greatly uh, to, to get me through that, that time and, and to help him as well. Um, and again, it was just, it was just the, the fact that, that I had a, a group of, of people who cared and um, who were doing the same thing I was. So again, they, they, that walked in my shoes and could give me some input, which, which I think is uh, invaluable. And I, I don't, I just don't know how else um, you can get that. And of course the groups are, are, uh, again, I think the best value for the dollar, for the dollar, you know, coaching programs, the, the coaching program that we do is relatively uh, expensive when you look at it on a cost basis. Um, I think if you look at it on a return basis, it's really cheap, but nobody looks at it on a return basis. They look at it on a, on a cost basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the groups are considerably, um, they're less. Uh, one thing I always say about the groups is you and your group members are who are, are holding you accountable. And so your progress is really based on you and what you put into the group. Um, you will get out in, in spades. On an on a individual coaching process, you have a coach that's going to hold you accountable and kind of, you know, uh, uh, hold your hand, pull you along, push you along, whatever. You don't have that in the groups except for your group members who uh, we've, we've started a, a program to have um, group partners. And when we bring a new person into our groups, they have a mentor. So someone that, that can answer all their questions and and, you know, kind of get, make sure they get in the group 
well, put their arm around them, et cetera, mm -hmm. until they get to know everybody in the group. Do, what, what do you guys do for new members in your, in your groups? Well, we, we have a, uh, an orientation process and, uh, and, and a little bit of a training process. And then, of course, uh, our facilitators act um, as a coach. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, there's a ramp up time. And then, of course, you have, we, we call them composite partners, uh, but you have a, a partner that you'll, uh, another shop owner that you'll talk to every month and, um, and then your facilitator. So uh, we, we want to, you know, we want you to grow at your speed. You're not going to, you're not going to make massive changes overnight because it just, the, the, the mind and the body just don't work that way. But, but we take, we're looking for forward progress. And that's, um, that's really the key is, is you get, you get some movement going forward and you get a little bit of momentum and then things pick up speed. And um, before long you go, wow. At the at the last at the last shop I ran, we had uh, kaizen was a word that was used over and over. It's a Japanese word that basically means small incremental improvement. Um, and and now when I hear the word kaizen, I want to choke somebody because the owner would say it every day. But literally, that's that's where you make the most progress is just that consistency of movement forward. Uh, I always tell shop owners, you, it took you you know seventeen years to get here you're not going to get out in two months, uh, you know, and then building good habits. I believe, I believe success in life and success in business is about building good habits. You know, your, your inspections in your business, if you have a good inspection and people do inspections, well, you'll have lots of opportunities to sell stuff to your clients because they need them. And, uh, and, and, but if you don't have a good habit of having a good inspection, you may have half to sell to your clients and, and you may struggle and think you need more cars when what you really need is to, you know, have a better habit at inspection. So to me, it's about, you know, slowly building uh, habit upon habit upon habit over time. And I do believe the groups are really good for that. Mm -hmm. Do you have, um, do you have group members that struggle uh, because they're moving very, very fast. And then there are, are some other group members that are moving much slower. Do you have group members that kind of, that bothers them that they, they struggle with that? No, I, I think, uh, again, the, what we're looking for, or what the group members are looking for is progress. And um, there are going to be times where somebody's moving quickly and somebody else is not moving so quickly. And I mean, uh, you can call it seasons of life. Uh, it's, Priorities change, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the one thing about the groups is that you, you build that. There's also that friendship that develops. And so I, I can't really ask you those deep questions about what's going on and, until there's trust. And that's, that takes some time uh, in the group. But when we build that trust, then I can, I can, I can ask you, what's going on. And it could be, again, something totally unrelated to business that is, that has got your focus right now. And because of that, I've, I haven't paid attention to the business like I should. Well, okay. Well, as, as your friend, I, I, I can offer you my uh, encouragement. Um, my, my, my foot, yeah. you know, whatever it takes kind of thing. <laughs> Um, whatever I can do to, to assist you. Um, but, but there are going to be those, the, those seasons where, where the, the business and, and I, I truly Life goes hope, up and down yeah. business goes up and down there. There are, there are we, going we to be, we think it's linear, but it's, it never is. You know, I, I, what I like to think is, you know, maybe it goes up five feet and drops two feet and then goes up, you know, two feet and drops one. And, and at least now we're four feet higher than we were, right. You know, before, as long as we're not going up five feet and dropping seven, um, I think we're in, pr in pretty good shape. Uh, we have, uh, in our company, we have the Gear for Shops, which is the online um, great education and resources for shops with the online training. Currently, we have 33 classes in there. And Kent, my, my son, and, you know, he's, 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 he's my partner in this business, frankly. Um, he... 
he and I have both discussed the idea that, you know, maybe two different trainers, even teaching the same material has real value, even though they may, and maybe even specifically because they may teach it differently and, uh, and people can get something different out of that. I am really, really excited to get um, some, some classes from you and, and get them into uh, gear. Um, so what do you, what do you think about that? <laughs> I think that's true. Cause I use smaller words than you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but I think, I, I think it's, it's, it is interesting. I, I, uh, uh, I remember one time somebody asked me about a, a particular uh, number that, that he had just learned about cause he went to a class. I think it was at ATE. And I said, what do you mean? You've never heard that before. I mean, you've been to my training and I, I talk about that number all the time. And he, it was just, again, it was just, it was phrased a different way and it clicked or maybe he was more attuned to listening at that time. So yeah, it's, um, I, um, I have been to, to shops where they've asked me to train something. And I say the same thing that the shop owner does, but uh, of course I'm, I'm a prophet cause I'm from more than 50 miles away. And, um, and so they, you know, folks listen differently and, and so I, I think you're right. I think we teach uh, a similar philosophy and we teach it a little different style and uh, people will find one way they'll hear it one way and then they'll, they'll catch something else from, uh, from the same thing at a, a different, uh, a different trainer. I can't tell you how many times I have been talking to say a husband and a wife and I'll say, well, you're, you, you really should do blah, blah, blah. And the wife will literally just give the husband an elbow because he'll go, oh yeah, okay, great. And she's she's like elbowing him, and and you're like, you know, it's like, well, why'd you elbow him? And you and I both know what that is, right? She's, I've been telling him this for exactly. twenty years, and he won't listen to me. So, um, I think it's I think it's going to be uh, really cool to get you uh, and some of your education. I want to, you know, I want to make this uh, uh, interesting also for. The people that would be listening, you and I have a, a a somewhat disagreement on what's the most important thing for the <laughs> shop, and I say somewhat because I think fundamentally we both want exactly the same thing, and you're going you're coming about it from one direction, and I'm coming at it from another direction because that's how I learned it or that's how I experienced it. So what what is that fundamental thing? that I'm talking about because you laughed. I know what you're, I know what it is. Well, uh, I look at gross profit dollars per hour and, and you look at gross profit. I just look at them in a little different way. And that's all. I mean, um, when, when we really look at our business, what we are doing is we buy labor wholesale, we buy skilled labor wholesale and we resell it. And in the process of reselling the labor, we also generate uh, we, we generate some parts sales and both the labor and the parts together give us gross profit and, and that how much we generate in each hour. And because that's the big thing, we don't have unlimited widgets to sell. We have eight hours of technician time every day times the number of technicians. That's our, that's all we've got. So we need to maximize those eight hours and we generate a certain number of dollars in gross profit every hour. And, and we can look at percentages, and I know we agree on this, that percentages are kind of guidelines, but nobody pays their bills with percentages. That's the argument that I, that I always like. I always like, ah, don't tell me that. You, you don't pay your bills with percentage. You pay your bills with dollars. Right. And, and my, I, I never looked at, at profit margin on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. I didn't need to because we had systems and processes the way we estimated. We knew that the margin was there. I looked at productivity. Are my guys doing eight hours or more per day? And I look at sales. And so I knew if we sold it and my guys did it, that the dollars, you know, were there in the bottom line. And that's how I've always run uh, the automotive businesses that I have run. Um, it, it, it kills me to watch these guys, say don't let that don't let that job out of your shop discount cut your margin just do more work get more cars in your shop 
you know, there's a, there's an idea in the business, and it's a big idea, and it's something that I've been fighting against, and it is car count equals profit. Um, what do you say about that? Uh, I say that too many cars can actually cost you money. You need the right number of cars because if you look at it, when you uh, every time a technician moves a car into a bay, it's there's probably ten minutes of of moving the car in. Brown, it up in the brown bananas, wasted time. Right. And then when they're all done, they got to they got to drop it down, kick the chocks out, back it out, a little quick road test, park it. I mean, call it 10 minutes on each end. So 20 minutes. And the more times the technician has to do that every day, I can't bill for that time. I can bill for the time that they're turning wrenches. So ideally, I want to sell 10 hours on one car and have the technician just work on one car. And if I sold 10 hours on one car, he'd probably be done in seven to go home early and everybody be happy. Um, well, that's not, that's not, not the not real reality, world. right? Yeah. So instead, I'm going to try to sell the time on three or four cars. Uh, and that's all I want my technician working on. And if he's moving three cars, then there's an hour's worth of unbillable time. And I would say raise your labor rate to account for that. Um, use a matrix on your hours. That helps account for some of that. But and and I think you you would too. So I'm not saying if, something. If they're that, only working on three cars, yeah. And however it mixes out, we're going to probably sell nine or ten hours. Yeah. We're going to probably bill nine or ten hours in an eight hour day. Right. And, and then we have a very effective, uh, productive technician, and we have lots of gross profit dollars to pay our bills. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I I struggle with that, and that, I think that's one of the things too about you and I uh, bringing the companies together is that we, you know, even though you may say it in a little different way, we we kind of agree on this. I really want to run a business that is the machine is running properly. I'm bringing the right people in. I've I've got great staff. We're doing great inspections. We're giving the customer lots of options. The customer is buying a, a you know a certain amount of that. Um, and, and, and we have a certain average repair order and that makes the business flow really well. You, well, you, you have a, go ahead. And then I'm going to ask, I'm going to say, say that, one more thing. Well, I was going to say that, that, you know, the more cars you bring in, the more pressure you put on the front counter. Yeah. And the, the reality is, is that the more time, this is a trust business. So the more time the advisor can spend with the customer, the more trust is built, the more relationship is built, the more likely they are to buy something and the more likely they are to come back. When you start running lots of volume through, it's, it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, next. And we don't have any time to, to build that relationship. And, uh, and so that's, again, more pressure on the front is not what I want. I want, I want a smooth, um, I want everybody to be busy, but I don't want them to leave going oh my god it's so good to get out of here today because because it was just coming out. crazy yeah for 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 my business when i was running the, the shop we we had a we had a record week sixty three thousand four technicians just killed it it was one of the easiest weeks we ever had it, because we had you know good average repair orders people were saying yes the the everything flowed the parts came in right there weren't a lot of issues but it seemed to me that when we had a bad week, like a, uh, you know, a, 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 I don't know, $27,000 week uh, with four technicians, it was harder. It was a much harder week uh, physically and mentally. And at the end of the week, you were like, oh, my God, that was such a it was such a week. It was so hard. And, and you look and you didn't make any money. But, you know, two weeks ago, you did 63000 and And it was easy. We, we call it running a zoo. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, I was at a shop where the technicians would come in in the morning and for the first 20 minutes, you've got four technician moving, four technicians moving cars out of the way so they can get to the one that they want to work on. And, and I think, okay, four times 20 is 80 minutes and they're probably worth about $4 a minute each. So we spend 350 bucks in the morning before we start just moving cars. I can hire some valet guys for a whole lot less than that. And 350 in the evening, mean, putting right, the mess back. back in place. So yeah, I have a, I, I, I have a client that, that does that routinely. And you, 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 their facility is limited, their parking's limited. 
And you're like, how do you make up for that when you, you spend so much time moving cars in and out of your bay? You know, uh, the, to me, the perfect shop is a drive through, not a, not a pull in, pull out. And it's at least two bays per tech. And I would probably put three bays per tech, you know, if I had the perfect shop. It seems like wasted space, but they can be very efficient because if they get stuck on something, they leave it there, they put it on another one on the next rack and, and do their thing. And then they can go back to whatever they're doing. You, you have one, I want to talk one more thing and then we'll wrap this up, but you, you make, I think you make a, a great point. You know, we start talking about technicians that are not productive and not effective. Our, our productivity, you say it's 5.1 hours. I, I always say it's like 71% in the industry, uh, which I think would be right there real close um, instead of eight, which is extremely costly to shops. When a tech is not productive, not e efficient, is it in most cases the tech's fault? <laughs> 99.9% .9 of the time, it is not the technician. Now, there are technicians that are a little slower than others. Um, but when we, when now, and, and, and we believe in tracking time, every minute of every day, I don't even know what the technician is doing, because that's our, that's what we're selling is that inventory. But when, as soon as we start tracking things, what we find out is that systems and processes, we're, we're waiting for authorization, we're waiting for parts, we're waiting for another car. Um, we pull a guy off of a very productive thing and put him on something that's not profitable. And, and then when he goes back, it, th there's a, there's a the, time that it takes to get back into the flow of, of where you were at, what you were doing. Right. And so again, it's, it's, uh, almost always not the technician. It's the front counter or the systems and processes that are in place that are hindering. And, and again, it, I mean, we're buying, our industry is buying eight hours and selling in, on my, my studies that I've seen is 5.1 is the average. And the scary thing is, is to have a 5.1 average, you got a whole lot of folks below five. Well, it's kind of when you think about it too, you, you know, you, you, let's say today you're paying a, a good technician $34 an hour. You had a load 25, 30%. Now you're up to $42 an hour, $43 an hour. And if they're 72% productive, now you're up in the high 60s, low 70s per hour. So now my cost of that hour is so much bigger. Uh, and and not, not that I'm, I mean, I'm still selling it for what I'm selling it for, but there's so much less gross profit dollars in the job uh, because of the lack of efficiency and in, in, in driving that cost up. Uh, I, 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 I believe that every shop owner really should get a really firm grasp on the financials and where the shop makes money and where the shop doesn't make money and then make those adjustments so that the shop is primarily doing the things that will help, you know, put those dollars in the bottom line. Yeah. I, I think that, that understanding your financials or the key numbers that drive your business and, and hours per repair order are a big part of that. Um, I mean, some shops look at dollars, which is, which is fine, except that I can have a lot of dollars and not have um, the hours on there, which is what I need for my, since labor should be your biggest gross profit uh, generator, uh, but, but hours per repair order and, and um, gosh, there's so many, there's so many key indicators. Productivity, but, yeah. profit, gross, labor margins, parts margins, you know, et cetera. And, and they need to know those things and, and they need to know where they're at and where they like to be and start making again, just, steady progress towards them. Yeah. And I, I don't know that you, I don't know that you ever have the perfect shop for very long. I think you have a really well-run, very profitable business that has some ups and downs, but it's still overall well-run and, and very profitable. And then I think we have a lot of people in this industry, which, which I feel for them. I mean, I do what I do because I want them to be successful, mm -hmm. but I think we have a lot of people in this industry that almost believe that you're just not going to make money here. You're just going to have a, enough to live by and squeak by. And it's a, it's criminal to me that that happens so often in our industry. Well, you know, and again, uh, the people in the century, the salt of the earth, they they are the, the best, best people, people you'll ever meet. Yeah, absolutely. And um, unfortunately, many, not as many as it used to be, but, but many come from a, a technical background and the, 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 they were very good technicians 
and they were very good technicians became it came to them easily they were wired that way and, and kinesthetic learners yeah and, <laughs> and and but just they're wired in such a way that i mean they can't they they don't stop at cars they they're drier at home quits work and they take it apart they got to know how it how it works and they got to be able right. to put it back together and they can do that they, they put things back together with no extra parts which is which is against uh you know 90 percent of the population could never do what technicians do but because it comes easy to them they sometimes do devalue it yeah well anybody could do this no <laughs> not anybody could do this very very few people can do this and what you have is a rare gift uh and and we we need more people like you and we need to you need to be paid for that gift and that talent and i always like to remind them too look at the technician's arms and hands and for the scars the burns the cuts um somebody needs to pay for that i'm a i'm a, a little adhd and i'm also uh, obsessive compulsive so <laughs> you might see me counting uh and i count my fingers uh under cer certain circumstances so if if you're with me and uh, you and I are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You, you look down and count my fingers. It's probably because you're you're frustrating me or upsetting me or something like that. And that's my my mechanism. Uh, when I'm in church and I'm bored, I count the scars on my hands. And there are over 153 scars on these hands from the 27 years or so that I worked on cars. Um, and those are only the scars on my hands. They're not you know the the ones on my arms and 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 other stuff. Um, you know, we, we, we give so much, uh, of ourselves, uh, both as owners, I think as service advisors and as technicians, and, and we deserve to make a fair and, and honest and decent living out of that, uh, which means having the money to send our kids to a decent college, uh, having a, a decent retirement fund, having medical benefits, things like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know that, that we all have a right to everything. But I think when you're working hard and you're doing something that has value that adds to society, that, that there are certain things that should happen. And it always bothers me in our industry when people are underpaid. And in my opinion, right now, technicians are way underpaid. Service advisors are underpaid. And there aren't enough owners making the kind of money that they should be making for what they invest and what they put into it. And I agree that it's and the, the scary thing is we're all competing, uh, whatever trade you're in, electricians, plumbers, HVAC, we're all competing for the same kids coming out of out of high school or trade school that that want to work with their hands and don't want to to go to a four year college. And so what do we got to offer? And we and, and pay is going to be part of it. I mean, there's some kids who just love their gearheads and they just love cars. And so but there's some that are like, oh, well, I'm going to work with my hands. Where am I going to work with my hands? And we need to make this more attractive. We need to be able to compete with uh, the, I'm from the Seattle area and the Seattle paper was probably about a year and a half ago, ran a full page ad uh, with electricians. And they, they said, do you want to make $47 and something an hour become an electrician in three years? Yeah. Well, you know, you can't become a top level technician in three years. It probably takes five. But when they're when they're there, a journey level technician, I think, should make 50 bucks an hour. And, and we're easy. not, we're not easy. there yet. And I, I would push it further than that. Myself, having been a technician and understanding, you know, the value of, of what that is. Um, so, you know, we, we could go on and on and on. I'm sure we will in in future podcasts, etc. We're kind of at that at that hour point, which we don't normally go past. Um, I am so, so, so excited to be able to, you know, bring what you do with the, with the groups and, the, and the, the GSM, the Gorilla Shop Management and, the, and your um, ASSAS or ASSSA yes. class. Advanced um, Selling Skills for the Service Advisor. And then our Service Mastery Program and our GEAR program, our online you know, training program where people can go in there and really get good education at an unbelievable price. Um, I, I can't wait to get you in there. So, um, you know, we're we're announcing that we're excited about it. And uh, uh, um, for anyone that that is watching this, uh, I want to thank you for uh, paying attention to us and look for great things uh, to come from uh, uh, RLO training and from the institute. Here for shop. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.